fundamental and, and profound. And um, then Kesey's book came out, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, which had a character in it named Chief Broom. And Chief Broom was uh, portrayed as an Indian from the reservation where I'd been working. So um, I was moved by that, and it sort of gave me the rest of the permission to think what I was thinking, that Indians were important. And so I sent uh, Kesey photographs through a mutual friend I knew his address uh, that I'd taken, and he basically sent back a note, come on down, and uh, was welcomed right in and blended in and became part of it. We're on our way to L.A. We'll have to all get together to L.A. on one plan of attack. How are we coming in? Is everybody Which coming at this in everywhere? Time is You're going to have to be all the guys be everywhere. The intrepid trips production at the moment is the acid test. Being on the bus, going from acid test to acid test, basically, which was Kesey's form of performance art, using um, our band was a group called the Warlocks, which later became the Grateful Dead. Uh, a number of people around the group were ex-army, like I was. A number of them were artists, and. Um, it was an intensely improvisational. Our best technicians are now on the problem. All right, turn up the microphone. Was it a moving laboratory? Yes. In Kesey's mind, it was a moving laboratory. Uh, he said, uh, you know, these scientists talk about doing research, and that's really all they're doing is research. You know, we're doing search. And if we don't boil rocks and drink the water, how do we know it won't make us drunk? And what we do is boil rocks. In other words, try any damn thing. And some of them were pretty interesting experiments. One, for example, would be um, take a whole bunch of garden, bunch, people sitting around, basically stoned, 15 people. Take a bunch of garden hose and cut it up into eight or 10 foot lengths, tie it all together in a knot, grab two pieces, talk into one and listen to the other. And everybody's doing this. And so you know who you're hearing, but you don't know who you're talking to. And this is happening in a group of 15 people just to see what happens. That was search. The whole Earth Catalog project certainly had all of that frame of reference, but it specifically came out of an LSD uh, afternoon where I was on a rooftop with you know, probably 200 micrograms of LSD in me, you know, nothing better to do, and thinking about, um, or in context of lectures I had recently heard by Buckminster Fuller, and Fuller, like McLuhan, was one of the people we were paying attention to then. And Wiener was in there, Cage was a little bit in there. The initial audience in my mind was communes. It was people who were trying to reinvent civilization, and I was just trying to provide the tools with which to reinvent civilization. And um, it turned out a lot of people were interested in that. The communes that try to, quote, go back to basics, and you know, just farm, um, made a real good try at doing that. And some of them even learned a fair amount of, of serious farming, uh, a book that we purveyed in the Whole Earth Catalog called uh, Goat Husbandry. It was a very popular book, and it's a good book. You, know, you get the book, get a goat, you can do it, milk and everything. Um, but it didn't play out very far. It was basically 
a different kind of dead end from what drugs were. Whereas some of the technology, um, some of the alternative energy technology showed real promise. Uh, solar energy basically took off gradually and takes off to this day. Um, computer technology, obviously. And because the counterculture hippie frame of reference was there for outlaws of all kinds, it basically swept right through the outlaw computer people, the hackers, and became their frame of reference in a, in a kind of a gift economy, optimistic approach, became then the basis for personal computers, personal computer software, then the internet and the web, and on and on. And that's the main legacy from the 60s, as far as I'm concerned, is the open system approach to everything having to do with computers. Stuart, uh, you offered two lines in the catalog. How to use a computer and uh, how to build a cabin in the woods like Thoreau, one of the American icons. Uh, on one side you offered technology and on the other side anti-technology in one book. Mm -hmm. I agree. Was there a discussion about that among the users of the catalog or was it a conflict? What was your position in this time? We came down on one side of the conflict between technology and anti-technology. We came down on the side of technology. Basically on the theory of the way to make a technology work for you is just grab it and run with it and go do whatever you want with that technology. And uh, if that happens and everybody does that and these technologies basically get democratized, then they will work out okay. If you fail to do that and just say they're very, very evil and I will never touch them, then they have complete freedom to be as evil as they want. And you know who wound up in Thoreau's cabin was the Unabomber. It was Ted Kaczynski. Yeah. <laughs> Saying this is evil, evil, evil. And I'll prove it by killing some of the people who uh, do it. Um, and then, you know, that line then leads to Bill Joy saying, you know, Ted Kaczynski is right about a few things. You read his stuff and there's some sensible critique in there that we need to take seriously because, you know, what if we democratize uh, weapons of mass destruction? Is that a good thing? It was okay to democratize personal computers and the Internet, but what about weapons of mass destruction? It's a fair question. And that's one that we're now dealing with in the early 21st century. Um, I think it will eventually sort out, but it's a, it's a real question. Uh, well, he was saying the culture is going a whole direction here, and I think it's a dangerous direction, and I will personally prevent it from going there. And uh, he got heard by vile means, but he got heard. Gesellschaft und ihre Zukunft von FC. Die Folgen der industriellen Revolution sind eine Katastrophe für die Menschheit. 